bottle. She needs to make it crystal clear. Unless we get some progress in the next couple of weeks, we're off. What's what? your exit deal with the EU? I wouldn't pay the EU anything. Right, we so don't, we're the House of Lords, of which you so are a noble member, admitted in its own report that actually we have no legal obligation to pay a single penny. We came up with the expression, no deal's better than a bad deal. The reality is, WTO is a different type of deal. It's not no deal at all, it's how most other nations around the world operate on it. There's a huge opportunity if we leave without the terrible deal. We can take back control faster, sooner, and we can give much more certainty to business. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Mr. Richard Tice. Good afternoon, Nottingham. Yeah. How are we all feeling? Are we all good? Yeah. Now, you're not just here to sit on your backsides. We want some audience participation to make sure you don't fall asleep. So first of all, ladies and gentlemen, do we all believe in Brexit? Yes. When do we want it? Now. Do we believe in democracy? Yes. Does Theresa May believe in democracy? No. Everyone's on the right wavelength. That's a good start. Um, my name is Richard Tice. Some of you may know me, some of you may not. My day job is I'm a businessman, an entrepreneur. I've been involved in running companies small, medium and large, including a billion pound business listed on the stock market. I've built thousands of homes, created tens of thousands of jobs in the construction sector and bought hundreds of millions of pounds of investment into the UK. I've also got a small interest, what I call the night job, in politics. And to be honest, rightly or wrongly, previously, I've only ever been a member of the Conservative Party. I know, I know. <laughs> we all make mistakes. That was until a couple of weeks ago. But I said, and I think like many people, up and down the country, enough is enough. We cannot tolerate this shambles any longer. <clears throat> That's why... <clears throat> That's why I accepted the invitation to be the chairman of the new Brexit party. And we've been going... <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> right. Hopefully... Hopefully it means I'm not a glutton for punishment, but anyway. Um, uh, we've been going a week now, and um, the polls make interesting reading. The key poll, of course, is on the final day, on the 23rd of May, and that's the one that we aim to win. Now, um, some of you may have seen that we had a launch uh, in a factory in Coventry, but you may or may not have seen uh, the party's launch video. So hopefully, technology permitting, we will now see the launch video on the screen. ...have been betrayed. That is why I set up the Brexit party. It's why we're going to fight the European elections on May the 23rd. And that is just the beginning of what is needed in this country. Democracy is under threat. And when politicians fail to deliver, there must be consequences. I was too young to vote in 2016, but now I support the Brexit party because I believe in delivering on democracy. It's time to recognise that actually we are an incredible nation. This isn't about left or right. It's about standing up for our right to be heard. Successful, hardworking, so much to be confident, enthusiastic and optimistic about. That's why I'm supporting the Brexit party. We are a single nation. We wish to remain a nation. They must adhere to the promises made to the people. Let's be optimistic. And for the benefit of our children and grandchildren, if you want a home and you're a Brexiteer, you join the Brexit party now. We can do so much better than currently we're getting from our members of parliament. We want to be an independent, self-governing nation, making its own laws, controlling its own borders, and being proud of who we are as a people. Join us, help us, support us, do what you can for us. We need change in this country, and we need it now. 
Britain needs the Brexit Party, and the Brexit Party needs you. Now, if you haven't already signed up, and I know that many, many of you have, but please do join as a registered supporter and spread the word. And Nigel talked in the video about the need for better quality members of parliament and leaders running this country. And it is unbelievable. We have been completely and utterly humiliated in this process. The idea of our Prime Minister writing not one, but two begging letters in the space of a fortnight to overseas leaders asking how we can behave, what we can do, who we can trade with. I mean, it is utter, total humiliation. It is appalling, and it must stop, and that's what we plan to do. The truth is that we've got incompetent leadership, we've got an incapable negotiating team, and we've got politicians from all parties who say and write one thing in a manifesto, but then they do dirty, dodgy, backroom deals with each other behind closed doors in Westminster to thwart the will of the people. And it has to stop, and it will stop. We've got civil service, a civil service that has shown itself during this Brexit negotiating process to be simply not up to the job. We need better people. We deserve so much better than this. And there is no better example of the incompetence of these negotiators that they should say after uh, the second begging letter and the extension to October the 31st, some bright sparks in Whitehall and in government thought it would be a good negotiating tactic to stop no deal preparations. You couldn't make it up, ladies and gentlemen. You couldn't make it up. One of the reasons that uh, they said that we couldn't leave on the 29th of March or the 12th of April. They said we weren't ready. Well, if you're not ready, and actually the truth is we were ready, you don't stop no deal preparations, you ramp them up because that increases your negotiating leverage with the other side. Look, all of us have been involved in negotiations, whether it's buying a car, a house, or running a business. You have to be prepared to walk away and have a plan B. And if you take no deal off the table, you are nowhere. The other side will continue to shaft you in the negotiations. So it's just completely chaotic, and it shows how incompetent they really are. I'm going to tell a little story about politicians that I think sort of typifies it. Um, a florist goes into the barbershop, has a nice haircut, comes to pay at the end of the haircut, and the barber says, no problem, sir, that's on me. This is my week of community service. The florist says, thank you very much, and goes home. The following morning, the barber comes to his shop, and outside the door, there's a card saying thank you with a lovely bunch of flowers. The barber thinks that's very nice. That afternoon, the local police officer comes in, has a haircut, comes to pay, and the barber says, don't worry, sir, that's on me, it's my week of community service. Thank you very much, says the Bobby. Goes home. The following morning, the barber comes into work. There's a thank you card outside, together with some delicious donuts. I love donuts. Um, that afternoon, the local MP comes for a haircut. Well, <laughs> you sort of know where this is going, don't you? <clears throat> um, has a nice haircut, looks fine. Says, can I pay? And the barber says, no, don't worry, this is on me. It's my week of community service the following morning. There's no thank you card. No, no, no. There's a dozen other MPs outside the door <laughs> waiting for a haircut. <clears throat> it says quite a lot about far too many politicians. And it was the much-missed Margaret Thatcher who said politicians are like nappies. <laughs> Easy, tiger.
Politicians are like nappies. They need changing often and for the same reason. <laughs> um, so we need change. We need change. Enough is enough, ladies and gentlemen. We can do so much better. And that's what the Brexit Party stands for. Capable, competent, common sense politics for the people. We've got to take on the establishment. We've got to take on the vested interests of which there are many. We've got to take on the civil service and reform it. These are the things that can help run our country so much better. And we've been inundated, absolutely inundated, with over a thousand applications to be MEP candidates for the forthcoming European elections. And it's been truly humbling seeing so many people who've just said in their application form, enough's enough, I've got to do something, I've got to help. The quality has been truly outstanding. And you know, it's incredibly exciting. The other thing that's exciting is the number of people tens of thousands of people who've logged into the PayPal account and donated whatever they can afford, small amounts. And that is truly humbling because something is happening. There is a movement out there. There really is. And we've also had an incredible number of phone calls from activists, volunteers, local associations of other political parties saying, we've had enough too. Can we help? Can we change? There is something happening in the air, ladies and gentlemen, and it feels very strong. And therefore, politics is truly, I think, poised for change. We can use these European elections as a springboard to change politics for good, to break down the two-party system. Truly, the people of this great, wonderful nation, and you'll hear from one of our other speakers, some reminders of just how good and strong we are. We do deserve so much better. We deserve stronger, better leaders that spend our own taxpayers' cash more wisely, invest it more effectively, make faster decisions, and invest it properly for the people. Never, ladies and gentlemen, has the opportunity been greater. Never has the appetite been stronger for change. So we need to grasp this. Firstly, we need to restore trust in democracy, because what's happened is putting the very, very essence of democracy in peril in our nation, and it's unbelievable. We need to send a very clear message to Westminster. We meant it the first time, we still mean it. Leave means leave. The, the extraordinary thing, we all know, and millions and millions of people out there in this country know, that Brexit is a huge opportunity for this country. And yet, there's been no political party and very few politicians reminding us, selling it as a fantastic opportunity. It's got to be done properly, with competent, capable leadership. Um, sadly, at the moment, that is in very short supply. Because if we make Brexit a huge success, then the opportunity for our great nation knows no bounds. Do we believe in Britain, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. Let's see all your placards above your heads to make sure you mean it. Changing politics for good. Fantastic. Everyone's still awake. I know my place. I know my place in truth. I'm actually... They call me chairman, but really I'm just the warm-up act. <laughs> um, because we've got two fantastic speakers uh, coming immediately after me. Uh, the first comes from a family that is steeped in conservative politics. Her father was editor of The Times for some 14 years. She's been a member of the Conservative Party since she was uh, a child. But she has made the move, it was announced at our launch last week, from the Conservative Party 
to join the Brexit party. An incredibly brave, strong, emotional thing to do. And that absolutely should be celebrated. So please welcome to the stage, ladies and gentlemen, Annunciata Rees-Mogg. <laughs> Ronnie O'Sullivan at the final of the Masters. Thank you all so much for being here, for fighting for our country. A lot of people have asked why I'm here. I'm here for the same reasons as you. I believe in democracy. I believe in our votes being enacted by our elected representatives which they have failed to do. I am here to fight on behalf of the East Midlands, to represent each and every one person, every voter in our region, to make sure your voices are heard along with mine. I'm here to fight for Lincolnshire, where I live. For the people of Leicestershire, for Rutland, for Derbyshire, for Northamptonshire and Nottinghamshire. I'm here to stand up for every single person who put their cross in a leave box. And not only them, but all the Remainers who realize our democracy is more important than their own views. If only Westminster would listen. <laughs> Westminster, our representatives in Westminster, are two-thirds Remainers. They thought they knew better than us. All of us, the people on the streets, the people that work, the people that make this country what it is, Great Britain. They have put, they have, on the whole, there's the odd exception, they have put their own beliefs ahead of our ancient and historic democracy, and our politics has been broken by them. I'm here to fight for that democracy. I'm here to fight for every single person, to make sure we don't lose what is so sacred to our country, one person, one vote, one law. We need to change politics for good. We need to bring back belief in democracy. We need to make sure that there is no direct action, but calm, respected votes in the ballot box. Now, since announcing that I would be supporting the Brexit party, and today I announce it's for the East Midlands I will be standing, a lot of people have said, well, look at her in her gilded cage. She's posh, what's she got to do with anyone like us? It's not the kind of thing I like to lie about. In fact, I wish politicians didn't. Yes. I've had a very lucky upbringing. I didn't choose my parents. I didn't choose my name. People think it's a bit unusual. <laughs> Can't think why. But we 
may have different backgrounds. We may have gone to different schools. We've also got different families. We've got different lives. I doubt we all drive the same car. We are people. We are people of a great nation who should be listened to and whose views should be respected. We are, in fact, exactly the same. One person, one vote, democracy rules. I listen to those politicians in Westminster in their own gilded cage where they have an echo chamber of why Remain is so great. It's fear. We are the brave people of Great Britain standing up for what we know is in our best interests. In time immemorial, we always will stand up for our country. Our country is not only the fifth biggest economy in the world, the sixth biggest military in the world. We are number one for soft power. To imagine they cannot perceive that we can stand on our own two feet. We are Great Britain. We are a united kingdom. We will stand together and ensure that our democracy lasts and that our vote is put through so that we leave for the great future that we can see. We believe in our country. Why don't they? It is a privilege to be allowed onto a stage such as this, but it is a responsibility. I give you my pledge to tell you the truth. I give you my pledge that I will keep any promises that I make. I am not here for me. I am quite happy being a mum, looking after my darling daughters. There's more at stake than that. We need to fight together. We need to win together. Every single vote counts. You need to go out of this great hall and tell your neighbours, tell your friends, tell your families that we've got one chance to save this country and to save it effectively from being tied to the European Union failing as that is with the youth unemployment and the rise of the extremists. We need to get out. We need to leave, we need to leave cleanly, and we need to leave now. When I go, if I go, we still don't actually know if we're going to have this vote. They're still playing games in Westminster. If we have this vote, I will go in to my village hall and I will proudly put a cross against the Brexit party's name. You must do the same. One man, one woman, one vote. Vote for change. Vote for hope. Vote for democracy. Let's make us Great Britain again. Fantastic. Well done. Well done. Brilliant. That's, that's yours. Isn't she great? What a wonderful speech. We're very lucky to have Annunciata as part of the team and to lead the East Midlands region. Well, we've got our third speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Someone who needs little introduction. 
He's known to a few people. But it's worth just reminding ourselves of his achievements. He has fought for the cause of leaving the European Union for over 25 years. He's been through unbelievable abuse, threats to him and his family. It's been incredibly difficult. But with courage and determination, he has stuck to it. There is no question that he is probably the most influential person in British politics in the last 70 years for what he has achieved. <laughs> history, history will show that without question. And before we welcome Nigel to the stage, let's just remind ourselves of him in action on the video. Oh, I'll be leading the Brexit party into those European elections, as it now looks certain they will happen. Anybody that has ever been in business knows that when you sit down for a negotiation, both sides are prepared to walk away unless terms can be agreed. Westminster used to be known as the mother of parliaments, and here we are behaving, frankly, like a banana republic, ignoring the views of the people. People weren't agreed on what leave right. meant. Right, simple, leave, there was full no stop, manifesto leave, leave, full stop, but there is leave no in leave, the single market. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Nigel Farage. Thank you. Hello, Nottingham! You know, we launched this party just eight days ago. And if you look at the opinion polls, if you look at the coverage, I think we've made a pretty good start, don't you? No, it was very important to come to Nottingham, not just because it is the biggest, most important city in the East Midlands region. That was a good reason for come. And of course, you've met this afternoon our lead candidate for the region, Anunziata, who's going to do a fantastic job. <laughs> but there were two other people that I thought it was worth coming to Nottingham for. They're two people in many ways that epitomise the political class in this country and shine a light on the problem that we face. One of them, famous son of Nottingham, is of course Kenneth Clark. Now to be fair, to be fair, and he's a very jolly fellow actually, and I like Ken Clark. You know, in democracy, you can disagree with people, but like people as human beings. Let's get some civility back into our politics, please. Now, Ken's view has always been that, uh, and it's still the view of 75% of our members of parliament. They believe in the European project. They think we are too small to weak, too feeble to run our own affairs. I fundamentally disagree with Kenneth Clark, but to be fair, at least he's been honest with the electorate about that all the way through. Which brings me to the second Nottingham-based politician. <laughs> I was in Beeston the other day. Do you know who their MP is? Well, it's one Anna Subri. <laughs> and here's the problem. It's fine for Anna Subri to vote Remain in the referendum to support the Remain campaign. I've got no problem with that. Why should I? It was a choice. But let me tell you what I have got a problem with. I've got a problem 
with Anna Soubry and actually most people in our parliament who said, as she said, to her constituents that despite her own choice, she would, if she was elected in 2017, honour the referendum result and what she has done is the complete and absolute opposite. It is dishonest, it is disrespectful, it is undemocratic, and it is wholly unacceptable. Yeah. And that is why we're here. We had that referendum. It was called by David Cameron. Do you remember him? He was the Prime Minister once in this country. Not much of a legacy, one would suggest. We had a referendum, and do you remember, in the middle of it all, he sent a document, didn't he, a leaflet, to every home in this country, using over £9 million of taxpayers' money to continue their endless propaganda. And it was endless, wasn't it, indeed? The Chancellor at the time, George Osborne, told us, do you remember there'd be an emergency budget, interest rates would rise, taxes would go up, companies would flee the country, half a million people would lose their jobs immediately, plagues of black locusts would, well not quite that far. But it was Project Fear, wasn't it? And that document that came into our houses talked about the consequences of leaving the single market and the customs union. We even had President Obama coming over here. Well, a very anti-British American president. There's a chap in the White House now who I've met once or twice who I think likes us a bit more. So Project Fear was in full swing. We were going to be poorer, weaker. It was all going to be a disaster. And we said, we don't care. And we voted, despite all of that, by a very clear majority of 1.3 million votes. We voted to leave the European Union. But here's the key. The key is, in that document that David Cameron put through each and every one of your doors, it said, whatever the result, we will respect it and we will implement it. That is what they said. And the next year, in a general election, both the Labour and Conservative parties said in their manifestos, vote for us and we will implement the result of the referendum and take you out of the European Union. And then, 498 members of Parliament voted for Article 50, which said we would leave the European Union at 11pm on the 29th of March 2019 with or without a withdrawal agreement. They promised us, this Prime Minister promised us we'd leave on the 29th of March. We didn't. This Prime Minister promised us we'd leave on the 12th of April. And we didn't. This Prime Minister promised us we'd leave on the 30th of June, and we won't. And now this Prime Minister tells us we will leave at the end of October on Halloween Day. Ask yourself, trick or treaty? <laughs> The will of over 17 million people has been deliberately and openly and willfully betrayed by our Prime Minister and our political class in this country. And it is time we stood up and said we are fighting back. But this is now about something much bigger than just leaving the European Union. It's about something much bigger than not giving away £39 billion of our money in return for absolutely zip. It's about more than taking back control 
of the ability of us, the people, to have our own sovereignty, to choose our own future. It's about more even than taking back control of our borders. It's about more than being able to determine our own trade deals around the world. This is about more than leaving the European Union. This is now about whether we are living in a functioning democratic nation. What have we sunk to? Can you, can you imagine if a country in Africa had an election and the result was ignored or overturned? I mean, everybody would be in uproar, wouldn't they? Even Emma Thompson included, I'm sure, once she left her pink boat. <laughs> and, every <laughs> and everybody would be in uproar. We demand the United Nations were sent in as this affront to democracy had taken place. And yet, here we are, living in a country with 800 years of continuous, although evolving, parliamentary government. Here we are with the mother of parliaments. Here we are who exported that very concept of democracy to America and to the rest of the empire as the world changed in the 20th century. This, ladies and gentlemen, this scandal, this outrage, this abuse is happening in our own nation and we've got to put a stop to it. Our Prime Minister has belittled us. Our Prime Minister has allowed us to be humiliated on the world stage. Our Prime Minister and most of both the Labour and Conservative Party representatives do not believe in Britain. They simply, like Anna Soubry and Ken Clark from this city, they simply don't think we are good enough. And yet, I know, I know that out there, what the Brexit debate did is it let the genie out of the bottle. It allowed us, for the first time perhaps in decades, to start believing in ourselves, to start believing in our people, to start believing and saying we were proud to be part of our nation. We were proud to be patriotic, proud about who we were, proud about what our grandparents and great-grandparents did to fight for liberty, for freedom and democracy, proud of who we are. This nation has once again become self-confident, self-believing. The problem are our rulers and our leaders, and I genuinely believe that the United Kingdom today, we are lions led by donkeys. I genuinely do. <laughs> so I set the Brexit party up a few months ago, because it had become obvious to me that with our current crop of politicians left alone, without any threat, any electoral threat to them, that Brexit simply would not happen, that that betrayal would become complete. So I thought there was a real chance of these European elections coming, and that is why I set this party up. So we are organising. We are mobilising. You've seen the calibre of some of our candidates already. Many of our people have been successful in their own lives. Many of our people have done well in business and in many other walks of life before they're coming into politics. And that's needed because apart from the sheer willful betrayal of our democratic system and our repeated vote, the other thing that has come to light is the sheer incompetence and uselessness of our career politicians who've never done a proper job in their lives. Never. Never.
So we're going to put before you an impressive array of men and women from all parts of this nation, from all backgrounds, from all colours, from all creeds, but all of whom are unified by their belief in this country, all of whom are unified by their belief in democracy, all of whom have lost trust and faith in our incompetent leaders in Westminster. And when I went in to that bookmaker's last Friday, <laughs> because among my many well advertised vices. <laughs> I quite like a bet. So I back the Brexit party at three to one to be the top party in these European elections and much as one never knows what could happen over the course of the next few weeks. Let me make it clear our intention is to fight these European elections and our intention is to win these <laughs> European elections. But let me be clear, we are not here, we have not formed this party just to protest, just to stick two fingers up to the establishment on May the 23rd, just to get our own back and tell them what we think of them. No, our ambitions are much, much higher than that. I think it's obvious that our two-party system simply doesn't work anymore. I think it's obvious that our two big parties serve nothing but their own interests and agenda rather than the nation more broadly. I think it is clear, I think it's very clear that we now have a parliament that does not represent the will of the people. A mainstream media that seems to have no comprehension of what is going on in this country and what is being talked about, you know, beyond the confines perhaps of, of the M25, but maybe is even narrower to a few central London boroughs. We need, we need something far bigger, something far bigger than just a protest vote about betrayal with not leaving the European Union. We need something more fundamental. We need a peaceful political revolution in this country. We need to break the two-party system. We need to have a Westminster Parliament that begins to represent the views and debates in this country. We need to change politics for good, and we intend to. And I think when it comes to our first run out on May the 23rd, and by the way, there is talk that the elections may not happen. There is talk that they might rob you of yet another vote. <laughs> but I don't think they're going to. Because the only way, the only way this could be stopped is if Mrs. May does a deal with Mr. Corbyn. If Mrs. May signs up to a permanent customs union, if Mrs. May signs up to alignment with single market rules, that it would appear to me is the only way this election can be stopped. But if it did that, then frankly, the Conservative Party would almost overnight cease to exist. And my guess is they'd rather take the short term hit than see their party destroyed. But it may be too late for that. You may have seen yesterday Mr Lewis, the chairman of the Derbyshire Conservative Association here in the East Midlands, has said that the Derbyshire Conservatives will not be campaigning for the party in those European elections. <laughs> They've, uh, <coughs> in one of the oldest and most successful political parties in the world, in Derbyshire, they've gone on strike. <laughs> and I suspect that may happen in many other parts of the country too. And is it any wonder 
that this party whose leader told us again and again, Brexit means Brexit. Do you remember all that rubbish? We're taking back control of our laws, our money and our borders. I mean, they must have wound her up at the back in the morning. I don't know. But if you... I'm not a great fan of this Prime Minister, I've got to tell you. <laughs> I, uh, I rang up Lord Hesketh the other day. Do you remember him? Formula One motor racing team back in the 70s. Larger than life character and a cabinet minister under John Major for many years in the 1990s. And I rang him up and I, I said, Alexander, I said, this is the worst a most dishonest Prime Minister we have had in our lifetimes. And he said to me, steady on, old boy. There's a bit of competition out there, you know. <laughs> but on balance, he agreed. On balance, he agreed. If you vote Conservative in these European elections, what are you voting for? Well, let me tell you what you're voting for. For example, in the North West, you're voting for Mr. Kareem, Sajid Kareem who is their lead candidate for the Tory party and who, yes, you've guessed it, backs a second referendum. Yes, you've guessed it, is a Remainer. If you vote Conservative in London, number two on the list is a man called Charles Tannock, who said the Brexit vote makes him ashamed to be British as he went to apply for an Irish passport. So that's what you get if you vote Conservative in these elections. And what if you vote Labour in these elections? You're going to get Lord Adonis. Now, how about that? <laughs> Lord Adonis, who said no Brexit. Well, quite. I agree with you. I agree with you. Lord who? Very good. I tell you what, sir. Given that it's musical, we'll swap places in a moment, all right? The timing was very good. But, <laughs> yeah, they're all behind us. <laughs> the country's behind us. The people are behind us. <laughs> Lord Adonis, who said no Brexiteer should vote Labour, and other many, many candidates standing for the Labour Party who've worked for a whole variety of Remain campaigns and who want absolutely to stop Brexit. We hear too much, in a sense, in the newspapers about division within the Conservative Party on this issue. We hear far too little about the truth of the Labour Party on this issue. We really do. There are five million. There are five million people in this country, many in this part of the world, and particularly as we go north, even more numerous, five million people who voted Labour and who voted Brexit, and now 83% of Labour MPs want a second referendum. 83% of Labour MPs are saying to Labour voters, you are thick, you are stupid, you don't know what you're about, we know better than you, and it's time you change your mind. So actually, if you believe not just in Brexit, but if you believe in democracy, being enacted, you cannot vote for the Labour or Conservative Party in these European elections. Only one party is unequivocal and absolutely unconfused in its stance on this subject, and that is the Brexit Party. We want to leave the European Union. We want to leave the single market. We want to leave the customs union. We want to take back control of our lives, our destiny, our place in the world, be proud of who we are, confident about our future, friendly with Europe, but able once again to open up to the Commonwealth, the English-speaking world, and our real friends around the globe. That is our vision for the future. I never, thought, I never thought I'd do this again. 
I've spent 20 years in the European Parliament. Got to tell you, I've enjoyed it more than they have for much of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly Mr. Van Rompuy, who had a very difficult afternoon that day. I'm not sure Mr. Juncker enjoys my speeches, although after lunch, I'm not sure he'd really remember or know. <laughs> Oh, believe me, it's all true. It really is. I sit next to him. <laughs> I've spent 20 years trying to do away with my own job. I genuinely thought, I genuinely thought, after 498 MPs voted for Article 50, that we would leave the European Union on March the 29th. I genuinely thought that I'd played my part in turning around the history and future of our country. And I was perfectly happy to cease involvement in frontline politics. I am not a career politician. I was a businessman that came into this because I frankly saw the gutlessness of so many people in Parliament, even those who in private might agree with me. And that is why I got involved. That is why I did what I did. And even I still find it quite difficult to get my head around the sheer extent of the betrayal that has taken place over the course of the past few months. And I am not, after 25 years of fighting and campaigning for our country to be free and independent, I'm not prepared to stand aside. I'm not prepared to be rolled over by our career politicians. I am going to fight back and I ask, are you going to join me in that fight back? And are we going to give them, are we going to give them the shock of their political lives? And in the end, are we going to win? Thank you very much. Thank you. Of course, hot in here. Yeah. Great. Grace. Grace. Thank you, Punisher. Just make sure it's Anunciatus has really got the handheld. Make sure the handheld is on. We'll do some questions. Fantastic. Great. Well, I think it's fair to say, ladies and gentlemen, he hasn't lost his touch, has he? <laughs> arguably, arguably, he's just warming up. Um, this is such a serious subject, but there's no harm occasionally in a little bit of humour. Um, because we're all ordinary folk. So the first question, actually, which I rather like, um, it comes from Stuart from Nottingham. Nigel, what's your favourite beer? <laughs> well, free beer. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, having been an MEP for 20 years, I'm not used to buying my own because the taxpayer does it normally. Ah, there you are. There you are. Well, it's true. Um, no, I'm not. It, it, this is a really dangerous question because you go around the country and they all want you to say that your favourite beer is from their city or from their region. My favourite one, in fact, does come from East Anglia. I won't name them, but I want to say this to you, that actually, and this is true, and Mr Tice will back it up, but I have actually cut back considerably, <laughs> lost a load of weight. <laughs> all right? <clears throat> and the reason is... I want to be fighting fit to take on the political establishment, and I'm going to. Uh, the next question is from Mark, um, and Annunciata, if, if I might pass this to you. Vote Leave had the slogan, take back control. What's the Brexit Party slogan? Is this working? Yep. Yep. Great. 
Um, our slogan is to change politics for good. It's to bring back our democracy, to make sure that our politicians listen to the people who put them there in the first place. It's to make sure we leave the European Union, but as Nigel said, it's to make sure that our votes matter. It's to stop there being disgust and hatred. It's to bring the country together to make sure democracy works as it should and to change the whole of politics for good. That's fantastic. Um, Carol from Nottingham asks, if we get MEPs into the European Parliament, how will it help Brexit? Nigel, maybe one for you. Well, you know, 20 years ago, 20 years ago, I was young <laughs> and shy. No, not really. Um, but 20 years ago, I first went to Brussels and Strasbourg, and everybody said, well, Nigel, what's the point? What on earth can you achieve as an MEP? And my answer then was, I'm going to use my role as an MEP to try to explain to the British people how this system works. To try to explain to the British people that it's the unelected European Commission who have the sole right to propose law. The unelected European Commission who have the sole right to propose the repeal of law. It was my intention to point out to the British people what it cost, and my intention to point out to the British people how not just funda fundamentally undemocratic was the whole system, but frankly, in many cases, how anti-British the whole system was too. And they all said I was wasting my time. In fact, they laughed at me. But I did it. And actually, people began to wake up. So it worked. It worked. And indeed, that is why three days after the referendum, when we had the emergency debate in Brussels in the European Parliament, I stood up and said, when I came here 17 and a half years ago, I told you I would lead a campaign to take the United Kingdom out of the European Union. And you all laughed at me, I said. Well, I said, you're not laughing now, are you? <laughs> in previous times, when I led, I led UKIP before, sadly, it took the wrong direction. When I led UKIP, what would happen is the party would do dramatically well in European elections and then less well in general elections. People would lend their vote to UKIP for European elections. This is different. People who are saying they're going to vote Brexit party on the 23rd of May are saying they will vote Brexit Party in the next general election, whenever that may come. We will do, as Brexit Party MEPs, we will do whatever we can to represent and fight for the views of our constituents. I will do my best to upset and irritate every single European leader. I promise to be more obstructive and difficult than I've ever been in previous times. But the real answer to the question, the real answer to the question is these European elections are far more important for the impact they have here than the impact they have there. We want to use this as a springboard to change politics for good. <laughs> uh, 
And the next question uh, from Lynn from Nottingham. I think this is for Anunciata, please. Um, why is everyone uh, in, in sort of the Westminster village, why is everyone so frightened about leaving? Lynn, it's because they're pathetic. Our relations, our ancestors who lost their lives for this country would be turning in their graves if they thought for one second <laughs> that politicians who are elected to represent this country have so little faith in it. I'm British through and through, and I know our country not just can be great, it is great. It will go on to be great, and in fact greater, if we're free to enact our own laws, to make our own trade deals, to choose how we run this country. They just think we should follow everything that other people tell us to do. Well, I'm afraid I'm a bit stronger than that. I think all of you are a bit stronger than that. We're gonna fight, we're gonna look out for our country, we're gonna believe in our country, and we will take it to greater heights still. Fantastic. The next question, uh, David from Yorkshire. He's travelled a few miles to be here. Um, uh, for Nigel, will the Tories try to cancel the European elections in the light of this week's polls? Well, I'm sure the opinion polls aren't thrilling them too much as they're on course for their worst election results since 1834 and much they deserve it for lying to us, don't they? <laughs> um, the only way they can stop the European elections happening are for Mrs May, or by the way, she calls it her deal, doesn't she? Yeah. Mrs May's deal, the hell. She didn't write it. Monsieur Barnier wrote it with Angela Merkel standing over his shoulder. And it's not a deal. It's not a deal. It's a legally binding international treaty. They are trying to con us to leave one set of European treaties, to sign us back up for another set of European treaties, which in some ways give, an even, give us even less say than being members of the Union in the first place. It is the most dreadful document. It has quite rightly been voted down by Parliament on three occasions. And now, now what she's trying to do with Mr Corbyn and his team is to stitch up the add-on, the political declaration, which whilst legally it's meaningless, she is quite prepared, despite everything she's said, and Corbyn's quite prepared, despite everything he's said, to try to come to a deal that would say we would bind ourselves permanently to the customs union. We would say that forever we weren't able to have a conversation with India or Australia, or America, and to bind us to single market rules, which effectively in the fields of employment, environment, and much else, would render it totally irrelevant whether we had a Conservative or a Labour Prime Minister in number 10 Downing Street. I do not think, Damien, this will happen. I do not think that the Labour Party will sign up to anything because they're enjoying the Tories being in free fall. I think they're complacently enjoying the Tories being in free fall, because just wait till I've finished with the Labour Party over the course of the next few weeks. We've, we've just got time for two more, but uh, the next one's Craig from Nottingham. 
uh, Annunciata, how can I help out the Brexit party? Um, we need all the help we can get. We are brand new. We, have been, we were launched eight days ago. We have hit the ground running, but we can't survive without support. We cannot survive without people who will go out and spread the word, who will deliver leaflets, who will hold banners, who will put stickers in their cars, who will spread the word that this country is great and we will support it and maintain our democracy. The best ways of doing that, go to our website, sign up, show your support, ask where you can help. See what you can do through our website, in your local communities, come to rallies, talk to your friends, talk to your families, talk to your neighbors, spread the word that we can restore faith in this country, we will restore faith, and it's not impossible to do. We can win. Everyone's very proper here. The last two rallies we've had, there's always been a question. Nigel, will you marry me? But not today. <laughs> um, the, the final question uh, is, is Steve from Lincolnshire. Um, if we can't have Euro elections, will the Brexit party put up candidates for a general election? I mean, you've touched on it, Nigel, but it's just worth reinforcing this okay. so that no, people no. are clear. No, no, let's be absolutely clear. There are local elections happening on the 3rd of May. We will not be in those elections. We simply didn't have time. We only really pressed the button and went live three weeks ago, getting a bit of organization in place and actually went properly live eight days ago. We won't be in those elections, but we will be in those European elections. And if, as the questioner asks, they weren't to happen, are we gonna be there for the next series of by-elections? Are we gonna be there for the next general election, will you bet your life we are? I could never. How could we ever trust these two self-serving political parties that have led us down so appallingly? We're living through one of the worst chapters in British history. This is a shaming moment in our nation. It is time that two-party system was broken apart. It's time we had a completely different look and feel to the Houses of Parliament. And I know, I know this is a hugely ambitious thing for us to be taking on, but we are taking it on and we intend to do it. Thank you very much indeed. So let's have you on your feet. Let's have your placards. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. I can't hear you. What do we want? Brexit. When do we want it? Now. now. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Have a very safe trip home and a very happy Easter. Thank you.